Suppose that f of x equals summation from k equals 0 to infinity of quantity k squared plus 1 times x to the k. Let's suppose that g of x equals f of x times cosine of x, and we want to calculate the double prime of g evaluated at 0. Okay, okay. So first thing I want to do is find g double prime of x. So I'm going to say g of x equals u times v. So g prime will be uv prime. Therefore, u will be f of x. This is the product rule. Bump, bump, bump. Whoop, 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 whoop. u prime will be f prime of x. Simple. v prime will be negative sine of x. I think it's negative sine of x. Or is it positive? No, it's negative sine of x. I always get those confused. Always get them confused. So then, this will be u v prime plus u prime v. Okay? So g double prime of x will be, now we're going to do the same thing, but, so we're going to do u v double prime plus u prime v prime. Does that seem reasonable? So first times u v prime. Yep. Yep, I'm good with that. Yes. Okay, now we need to add the second term. So it'll be u v double prime plus u double prime v. So the second time we do this, we have... So then for the second part, I'm just going to write this out as u prime v plus u prime v. Then I'm going to add a prime to the second part, and then I'm going to add a prime to the first part. So we have one double prime of u, and we have one double prime of v. Yeah, that seems reasonable. So u v double prime plus u prime v prime. No, we'll say call that two of those. Two u prime v prime plus u double prime v. So when you take that product rule and you do it twice, this is what you're going to get. Normally it'd be a little bit more formal, but eh, yeah, probably should be more formal. I'm not. Okay, so from here then, we need to find out what all these are. So u, we already got here, u prime, but we also need a u double prime, which will be f double prime of x, and we probably need a v double prime, which will be negative cosine of x. Okay, so now that we've got all that part of the way, we need to actually figure out what these f primes of x are. So to do that, we're going to start by rewriting the uh, summation. So we have a summation, k equals 0 to infinity, k squared plus 1, x to the k. And we want to find the derivative of this. So there, the way... The proper way to probably do this, the more formal way, would be to expand the summation, write out the terms and so you can see the pattern, take the derivative of each individual term along the way, and then recompress it back into a summation. Since this is reasonably straightforward, I am going to kind of do a shortcut here. I'm going to factor out this k squared plus 1. Um, you can kind of think of it as a constant, because as far as each individual term is concerned, it is a constant. So like, 3x squared, 4x squared, that 3 or that 4, you can pull it out. So I'm going to do case, I know this doesn't actually make sense, but I'm going to write it out because it kind of feels intuitively like the path you want to go. So you have something kind of like this, and then you leave this part and you take the derivative of there. Long story short, whoop, whoop, and I'll stick with green. The derivative of this is going to be the summation of k squared plus 1 times k times x to the k minus 1. So that there, that is just the, um, the power rule. We took the k, moved it down, and we had one less k up top. Okay? So then the, I'm going to call, so this is going to be f prime of x. And then f double prime of x will be the summation. Same thing again. So this time we're going to have k minus 1 times k. Just move the k over a little bit. k 
k squared plus 1 times x to the k minus 2 now. Just the power rule again, not too hard. So, so far we've used the product rule twice, and we've used the power rule twice. So now I think we have everything we need. Um, yeah, I can do blue. I'll do blue. So now we have this equation is what we want to fill out. So u is f of x, which is this right there. So we'll do, hmm, I don't really want to write that out. Seems like a lot of work. So we have the summation of k squared plus 1 times x to the k times v double prime, which would be cosine of x. We'll do a negative plus 2 u prime. U prime is f prime of x, which is this one. Summation k squared plus 1 times k times x to the k minus 1 times v prime. v prime is negative sine of x. So sine of x, I'll put a little negative in here, negative, plus u double prime. u double prime is the bottom one. So we have k minus 1 times k times k squared plus 1 times x to the k minus 2. And then we have v, which is cosine of x. So what we're going to do then is we're going to plug in the value of 0. So this is g of x equals, no, g double prime of x equals. We're going to plug in, is it 0? Yep, we're going to plug in 0. So plugging in 0, we have g double prime of 0 equals. So if we look at this, this will be 1. This will be 0 because we have sine of 0, so that goes away. And then we have 0 to the k, which is going to be 0. It is going to be 0, isn't it? This one's going to go to 0 too. Yep, but then we have, hmm, I'm going to come up here real quick. Man, I don't even know if we can do that. For, and I'm only going to assume this is maybe for k equals 2 to infinity because we can't take 0 to a negative um, exponent. 0 to the negative 1 would be 1 over 0, which is dividing by 0, universe explodes. So we can't do that. So... I'm going to just kind of assume that that k equals 0 is k equals 2. I don't know. That feels weird. Okay. But anyway, this part goes, to, this part goes away because we have sine of 0. This one we have 0 to uh, whatever k is. And whatever k is doesn't matter because 0 to any power is going to be 0. And so this that's going to go to 0. Over here, we're also going to have 0 to a power. So that's also going to go to 0. Therefore, I would say that g double prime of 0 equals 0. So that was a lot of work to kind of prove something that seemed almost trivial. Anyway, hope that thought process helped. I'll see you next time.